شفي الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ونور قلوبنا وقرة عيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارئ وسلم نوعنا تعنم وتعنيم وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحس على تمسكي بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدى ودلالة على الخير يبتغاء وجه الله مرضاته وقربه ثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب سوف يلهان يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب سوف يلهان يا وهاب يا غني اللهم إنا نسألك العلم لدني ومشرب سوف يلهان يا وهاب يا غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين أمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يقدرني فوق كلاس بسم الله so we are still talking about the conditions of the prayer right and we are at the section on that his place his body and his clothing need to be need to be need to be a clean out clean off a filth meaning of najasa he has to be free of najasa right so if he is so if he's ignorant so if for example last week we were speaking about like if he knows there is najasa somewhere on his clothing somewhere there is najasa but he's unable to pinpoint exactly where right on his clothing there is najasa um so therefore what is what he can do Right, is that he? What he must do, in fact, is that he needs to wash the entire thing, right? Because he's at he he knows his najasa somewhere, but he just can't pinpoint right, where where exactly is the najasa. That's the first thing, eh? Right, so if he washed half the area contaminated by filth, then he washed the rest of the area which touched by filth. Therefore, the entire area becomes pure when both sides are also washed. If not, then half of the area still has filth. He must wash the entire thing if he's unable to pinpoint exactly where is the uh, if he's unable to pinpoint exactly where is the najasa. Okay. And so he says here, and it's not valid for the one whose body and clothes has filth, even though the filth on the body and clothes is not moved by his action, right? So, it, um, uh, so for example, eh, for example, if someone is wearing uh, a long telekong, right? So the lo long telekong, right? So you see it. Let me just explain one something. Let me uh, get it. Allahumma sadiya rasulina Muhammad. Okay. So if let's say, let me just draw for you all. The ruling of the long telukong. Um, okay, if a person is wearing, so this is a woman, eh? Okay, she's wearing a long telukong, right? So, for example, you know her, her, her. Mm, let me let me just try and explain this. Okay, there is a ruling in 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 the in Fiki, right? That if she's wearing her telukong like this, right, and then she sujo. So, for example, when she sujud, she's not allowed to sujud on her own telukong. And the ruling here is that she cannot sujud on what moves with her movement. Right? She cannot sujud on what moves with her movement. Right? But if, she, if, if there's someone spring in front of her, right, and that, that person's telukong goes behind like that. See that? And she sujud on that person's telukong, no problem. There is no problem at all for her to do that because it moves with her movement. Right? This one moves with her movement but not with her movement. Okay? Right? So she's, she doesn't move with the one with the one who is doing the sujit. I hope you understand. Eh? Right? So if let's say for example, someone's praying and her telekong right, goes down, goes to the front very long. Okay? So she has a telekong and right, she's praying is very long to the front. When she moves, for some reason, when she moves, maybe maybe it's very. Let me undo this. Eh? Undo, undo. Okay, so maybe her telekong is so. Um, I don't know. Very loose for some reason, lah. Eh? A lot of cloth. Okay, so when she moves in the prayer, this part of the telekong does not move at all. Uh, it does not move with a movement at all, at all, at all. And she, instead, she's free of that part. So no matter how much she moves in the, in the prayer, uh, it, this part is not affected. So if she is sujud on that part, and she te technically it's not a problem. And uh, technically it's not a problem, even though she's I know it's highly uh, not recommended because uh, it could move with her movement. 
right? But if let's say if he's very sure, no, I can move as much as I want. My telekung is so loose or so long that uh, it's not going to move with my movement. She can technically sujud on that part because it's not counted as something that is part of her garment. It's not. However, with the ruling of Najis, the ruling of Najis, if there is a spot on her telekung that has Najis, right? Her whole prayer is not valid, even if she says, but the spot that has nudges is not, does not move with my movement. Technically, it's not part of my garment. We say, no, it is part of your garment because it's attached to you. So the ruling here is, right, the, the ruling here is, right, if the prayer is not there for the one whose body and clothes have filth, even though the filth on the body or clothes does not move by his action. See that? Uh, even if the filth does not move by his movement, as 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 opposed to the sujot situation, but you cannot sujot on a on a garment that moves with your movement, right? But if the gar the garment that the, <laughs> the garment if the, if the garment moves does not move your movement, but the garment has uh, nudges on it, right? It will nullify your prayer, even if you say, but it's it's very it's extensive, it's extensive. No, it still nullifies your prayer. Right, because you are connected to it, right? In and and also together with this ruling comes the ruling of the habil. Right? The habil is basically a rope that is attached to you, and the rope is attached to uh, something that has nudges. So in the past, right? This is in, in the past situation, right? When they used to pray, the Arab, the Bedouins, eh? When they used to pray, right? They used to have their goats by the side or their camels by the side, an animal, all right? So while they are praying, they don't want the animal to run off, so they would tie they, they would tie a rope to themselves, to the animal. All right, that's there. Okay? So the rope is connecting them to an animal that might have nudges on him. Because animal at the, at the, at the, at the anus and so on has nudges. There's nudges on the animal, right? So she's, he's connected to the animal that has nudges on it. Makes the prayer invalid. She's connected to, to, the, to an animal with nudges. Okay, people might say, okay, we have no more goats right, to, uh, to connect ourselves to when we pray. But we have children. Small children. And Majil Haram, when people put leashes on their... They put leash. There's a, there's a, there's a leash eh, on the child. You've seen that before, can They tie a rope right, to the child's body. Correct? And they put a harness on the child's body. Then it's a leash lah. Correct? And then they hold onto the leash. And the child can run here and there while they're praying. Right? Very distracting. Right? But they hold onto the leash. There's a hukum on that. Okay, so how, what can you do? Can you hold the leash with your hand? Or must you, is there another way by which you can, you know, maneuver around this? Right? That you can hold, as, and it's for a child who has a dirty diaper. It's specifically for a child who has a dirty diaper. So the child ha is najis. It's a najis child. Okay, so we're going to go into the ruling in a while. Eh? I hope you are following what the discussion here. <laughs> okay, um, so if I say go down, the prayer is not valid for the one whose body and clothes has filth, even though the filth does not move this action. The prayer, ah, here's the, the part. The prayer is also not valid for the one who, who holds the end of a rope that has filth, even though it's the end of the rope does not move by his action. So when he holds it, okay, when he holds the end of the rope that has, uh, that has filth. Right, so the rope on the other end is connected to filth. Okay, so the prayer is not valid for the one who does that. Right, so, 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 so comes the question, okay, so what if I have a child and I want to pray at Majlul Haram? How many people at Majlul Haram play, they pray and they have a child on a leash? First and foremost, it's not recommended to do that. Okay, first and foremost, it is not recommended to bring your child to the masjid and put them on a leash um, uh, and then pray with the child on the leash. Why is it not recommended? First thing is that the leash enables movement for the child and this movement goes to where? The, the movement goes to those who are around you. <laughs> right? The fact that it's on a leash means that he's moving like a circumference around you, correct? So, if you're praying in SAF, there are people in your circumference, you know. <laughs> they're in front, behind, left and right. They're all around you. 
So if you have a child on a leash and you're praying at a masjid, a masjid haram or anywhere you know, you're praying, your high chances your child on a leash is going to disturb people. Right? Because the fact you had to put a child on a leash right, has a, a meaning that your child can't sit still. <laughs> right? So which means he's running around disturbing everybody. In the in the masjid, there is actually a hadith that people don't actually know, but there's a hadith that Baron Sultan said that keep away your children and those who are insane from the masjids. Right? And 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 what this hadith means is that children who don't know how to behave, right? because because for two reasons, first reason is they will disturb the jamaah that's there, right? Second thing is that they will not learn to respect the masjid, or they're too young to know to respect the masjid. So wait for a while. Don't rush into it. Wait until they're old enough, right? And and for different child, for every child, different. So if someone knows my child hyperactive. Hyperactive child will not sit down or play racing at the masjid. No matter what I say to him, he will just he he will he will um basically act up at the masjid. Like right? it will not will not sit down quietly and 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 play with his cars right at one corner of the masjid or play with his blocks or whatever. Different children are different. So if you know your child is the kind of super hyperactive, right, and will not sit down quietly, will make a no- make noise in the masjid, will disturb the people in the masjid, will um dirty the masjid, right? That is on you to not bring the child until he's old enough to understand adab. It's actually on you, eh, on the on the parent to not. I mean, it's it's harsh, like it, it does, does does sound harsh, but that's the hukum. Uh, in Tarim, no children below the age of seven can enter the musal and the ruzahara. And no boys below the age of seven can enter the musafa. I below the age of seven, eh? They will check if you bring in a small a small child. They will check how old. Uh, has to be seven and up, right? Because of really the number of of young ones who come in and they make a racket in the masjid and they and they and they, they make a lot of mess in the masjid. So the the the, the, the school just puts a blanket rule. Even if your child is very well well behaved, they put a blanket rule. Nobody below the age of seven can enter the masjid. Right. Then, then at seven onwards, you train them. The training begins at seven onwards. You're not gonna lose out. Inshallah, you're not gonna lose out. Right? Because be- below seven, anyway, most human beings don't remember anything <laughs> right? Right? of what happened below seven right? or below five, lah, around there. Right? So the training actually happens at the age of seven or five. Five to seven, it happens. The training happens. So if you bring a child who's two years old, three years old to the masjid, right? Uh, you're bothering the people if the child does not know how to beef. In mm. your so child is a is a is a very hyperactive person, right? So then then do the child a favor, do the child a favor because his character is like that. Do him a favor, wait until he's old enough to understand adab and instruction, then bring him later on. Right? And I keep saying him, eh? <laughs> but it keeps happening to boys. <laughs> right? But girls okay lah. Girls maybe most of the time sometimes I don't know. Allah Allah, eh? being very biased against boys. Right? But boys usually uh, Allah Allah Allah. My my experience all is always the boys. <laughs> they, they they cannot sit down right, in the masjid. Right? So don't be don't be overzealous. Uh, don't be overzealous. Right? But um everything has its time and place. Right? Everything is time and place. Inshallah. Right? So unless you can train lah. So if you train then good. But if you have to put the child on a leash and bring the child to your to the masjid with you, then that tells that says a lot about the the discipline of the child. Can unless you're afraid that he gets stolen, lah. I mean, you're afraid. I mean, stuff in our villa, right? You're afraid that, that someone takes takes him and runs off with him. Then in that case, um, if you really want to bring a child of that age, then place him in front of you while you pray, and tell him to go anywhere while you pray. As you, you he's always in your in your eye in, in your view. There's no need for a leash. Right, but but I, Allah alam. I, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on anybody. But I don't know any, if anyone here has ever used a leash on a child. And uh, which, 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 I don't know. Eh? Well, how does it? How do you feel like that? Put put a leash on a child. You know. And 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 the thing about it is that this hukum is a child who who is has a diaper on. Right, because the child has his nudges on the child. Right, so the, this child is a diapered child. <laughs> so how old is that? Is a diapered child? Me four. Right, max four or five. Right. Usually by five, most most kids should be out of that diaper, right? By five, right? Uh, that means pretty young lah, three, four, five years old. Right. So there's no need to bring the child to the masjid actually. Wait for a while until the child is able to sit down in front of you and behave, right, in the masjid. Or wait till the child is toilet trained and properly toilet trained. I I know of people who like they're they're trying to train the child. The child is not really trained yet. And then when they're praying, and then uh, of uh, I heard of a, of a mother, her she was praying. The child 
kurun tahan, dulu nak butuh toilet by, 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 by herself, and then just uh, urinate in the on the masjid carpet. And masjid, 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 najis. You want to pray, right? So, so in the sense, yalah, that everything has time and place. Just wait, be sabar, sabar, wait for a while until they're older, then go to the masjid. Right? It's, it's okay, <laughs> inshallah. Okay, um, um, okay, uh. What if the child sits on the sajada in the prayer? So if the child has najis on the child, I am I'm assuming a child with with, with diaper. I has najis. Okay, as long as the child does not sit on you, so the child is himself is not your garment. He's not your garment. So even if he sits on on a loose end of your telekong, he's not your garment. So he's not on you technically. But the child with the dirty diaper comes and sits on your lap. Ah, uh, then the dirty diaper is najis, is najis on you. It nullifies the prayer. It nullifies the prayer. No, inshallah. I seen people in Darimat. They will, they will actually um from a very young age, they will train the child uh in a playpen. I don't know. I don't have to, I don't have children, so I I can't. I I want to comment. So I don't can I comment? <laughs> right. But from a very young age, they have a playpen. So whenever you want to pray, they the the child is used to being in a playpen. From a, from a baby used to being in the playpen, so when they want to pray, they put a child in the playpen, and then they go and pray lah. It's like a cage lah, in a sense. Right? Put the child in the cage. If the child is trained from from birth to learn to be in a cage, <laughs> not in a cage lah, in a playpen. Right? To learn to be in the playpen with the toys inside the playpen, and you feel safe also. Like you can actually put a child there with toys and everything, and you can actually you know go around do your do your stuff. In a sense, like if you, if it's, but it has to be training from from very early on. It can't be suddenly introduced to the child, and then they will they will they will uh they will tantrum ah, they will they will rebel like in the play play ten, they play play pen play pen. <laughs> but jail lah, it's jail lah. <laughs> right, but I've seen people who do that, and because why they want to pray, they want to. Now let's let's the only one in the house is the mother and the child. Two people in the house, nobody else, right? And then if the mother wants to the toilet. Uh, so the mother will, and the child is a toddler, can run around. Dangerous. It's, it is dangerous for a child to run around without you know, anybody there in, in, the, in the house. Especially if your house has stairs, staircase here, and then my house has a big staircase at the, at the, at the corner. Uh, but uh, then a playpen works very well. I uh, train the child on a playpen. Uh, and then put him inside, and you can go to the bathroom, you know, and your heart is at, is at peace. There's nothing that's, that's, that, that could harm the child in the playpen. <laughs> uh, in a sense, lah. And it helps you pray and everything. It's, it's a big, it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> but training from, from, from zero, from age zero, and from birth, training from birth, that they, they will not resist it. Um, and so anyway, if, if, now come to the question, if you have no choice but to put the child on a leash, Okay, I'm speaking about children because high, high chances you're not going to hold on to a goat. Right? So if you're going to have to put a child who has a dirty diaper on a leash, then place the rope below your feet and don't hold the rope. You can step on the rope, but don't hold the rope. Then in that case, I don't know how the child's going to pull the rope away from you. <laughs> and then run off with the rope. Right? You can, right? But you cannot be attached to the rope. You can't be attached to the rope. So I don't know how it's going to work. Like, unless your child, I don't know, unless you're, you're very heavy and then you just, you know, <laughs> you can't pull it up from underneath to you. <laughs> then you want to switch out everything, it's going to be a problem, can? Like, the whole thing is a big problem. Just don't do it, lah. Just don't do it. Um, the prayer is not invalidated by filth that did not make contact with him during bowing or other acts. Right? So that the filth does not make contact with you during bowing or other acts, it does not invalidate your prayer. So basically, if let's say I'm praying on a sejada, can? And then as I am praying, I see at the corner of my sejada a dead insect. Okay, dead insect not just I said uh dead cockroach <laughs> disgusting, right? Dead cockroach at the corner of my sejada I saw. Okay, okay, something closer to <laughs> to reality. Yeah. I prayed before and I saw at the corner of my sejada my cat's claw. <laughs> claw nagis, cat's claw nagis, cat's fur nagis, all nagis. Right, cat's fur um tree and more. Najis. So I was praying and I saw her claw. <laughs> what is her claw doing there? And her claw is at the corner of my sejada. I mean, she chopped her claws, my sejada, her. her claw dropped off. Right. So Najis. Cat's claw. Najis. So as long as, even though it's on the sejada, as long as I don't touch the claw, I, I pray to the side of the sejada. Or I saw like a dead, dead fly or dead, you know, I don't know, 
dead lizard high chance you're not gonna pray for dead lizard over there right? but basically if there is nice on the, on the side of the side, uh, so that maybe um like some urine stains <laughs> it's not disgusting like you shouldn't be praying in that way but if la if you're praying then your child muntah uh, for example eh, you, you're praying that your child vomited at the corner of your sajada as long as you avoid the najis your prayer is sound even though it's on your sajada you're not praying on the najis you're praying by the side okay even if your sajada is so you see for example eh, you have a cat in the house can the 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 carpet full of cat fur you know <laughs> your, your, your carpet is completely covered in cat fur right so you want to pray on the carpet you can take a sajada that is clean of cat fur place it over the cat fur carpet right and then play on the pray on the clean sajada sah can because why you are not in contact with the najis and that's what i do i ensure my sajadas are, are cat free <laughs> cat fur free right because then everything else are cat fur <laughs> right so the sajada cat cannot touch and the cat knows the cat the cat after i pray only will quickly run to the sajada so sajada so i will i will fold my sajada in uh in, inwards and she will have to sit on the behind part of the sajada but still must sit on sajada must must fix her body on top <laughs> Right, but she will aim, she will always, always aim, she will, she will, but then I will, I will always make sure I will flip it so the back and the the, 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 the the behind part is exposed to the cat. Right, so, uh, najis lah. <laughs> right, so anyway, um, as long as you're not on the najis, you're not in direct contact to the najis. Nah? Okay. Um, uh, it is obligatory to remove a tattoo if there's no fear or, or of the harmful methods which are harmful in the chapter of uh, uh in the chapter of dry ablation. Okay, so basically, when it comes to when it comes to tattoos, right? Uh, why are tattoos haram in Islam? Okay, tattoos they don't actually prevent water from touching your skin. Right, tattoos are is basically the dyeing of beneath the skin. Uh, but the 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 dye, if I'm not wrong, eh, the dye mixes with the blood. If I'm not wrong, that's how tattoos are done. Right? They 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 inject into the skin. Uh, it's done into the skin, and the dye that they use mixes with the blood of the person, which basically places the individual on perpetual nudges. Right? Because the, the 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 dye that's on them is mixed with blood. Okay, so there's perpetual nudges on the person. Okay, so it's not about the tattoos prevent water from burning the skin. It does not. Because there was once when somebody um asked a question on one of the anonymous platforms lah, the was saying why is tattooing haram in Islam? Then one of the artists said that because it prevents water from burning the skin. Then the person responded, it does not. <laughs> right, tattooing is beneath the skin. It's not on the skin. Right, the, the, the sticker tattoo yes lah, it's a sticker tattoo. <laughs> I know, now fake one. <laughs> right, well, the real tattoo is beneath the skin. Right, so he said the person who was doing that, who does that, who has done that, has done tattoos. Right, he said that, uh, it's below the skin. So I went to research lah. Like, I went to research. Oh yes, it's below the skin, and the haram is because it mixes with the blood, and that's why it's haram. And of course, the, the, the distortion of a human being lah. Like, there's a bigger, there's a bigger picture. The way it distorts the human being. So anything that harms and distorts is haram by by default. And whether or not it prevents your wudu or it harms your wudu, it doesn't matter. It is, it is, it harms and it distorts right, the human being. Right, so it, um, but further than that, right, on the side of fiqh, right, it is on the um, it mixes with the, with the blood. Right, so to remove that is very, it can, it can be very harmful on an individual, especially if a tattoo was done like on the face, right, very sensitive areas on the body or the neck. You know, these kind of places whereby it's hard to actually remove a tattoo. Right, so in these cases, um, the tattoo. So it's so if it's not hard to remove, it is wajib to remove. If it's not hard to remove it, it's wajib to remove it. However, if it's dangerous to remove it, um, then it becomes ma'fu anhu. It becomes pardon. The najis. So it's under the same chapter as najis. You see the the the, the muqaddimah hadramiyah. That means the sheikh understood tattoo. <laughs> The Sheikh who wrote the Mahadramiya understood the matter of the tattoos, because he placed the story of tattoo under the part of najis, not under the part of what prevents water from touching the skin. You see that? That means the Sheikh understood what tattoo was about, and he actually went to research what is tattoo. Right? So he found out that it's not about the skin; it's about the najis in the tattoo. 
So you should remove your tattoo because tattoo is mixed up with your blood. Therefore, it's nudges unless there is um, harm in trying to remove it. And in matters that harm, uh, in tayamu meaning meaning that you know you are you are you are allowed to do tayam. So when when you say when you this this, this statement eh, let me align the statement. The statement that goes here. Harmful matters which are harmful in the tayamum. Right, what does this mean? Ta- it means that a person is allowed to do tayamum instead of using water f- if water uh, causes discoloration of the skin or water uh, uh, delays the curing of an illness or water spreads an illness. Or water causes for the limb to be uh, to lose its ability to be used, right? So if the water does any of these four things to the human being, that means the water harms the human being. Okay, if it does any of the four things, uh, or the water, yeah, uh, so any of these four things, or the wound cannot touch water. Uh, you've been told by a doctor that the wound cannot touch water because it goes back to that that it will it will delay the curing of the wound. So if any of these things is 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 if with respect to, to a part of your body, then now it is um uh permissible for you and in fact in some cases compulsory on you through tayamum. Right? So either when the skin colour is going to be changed, decolorized by water, or the usage of the of the limb is going to be um uh is going to be the the limb gonna use like basically <laughs> you're gonna lose you're gonna lose the usage of your limb or the disease will spread by water or um the illness will delay in its cure because of water. Right? So if any of these things happen because of water, then you're allowed at this point to use tayamum instead of water. As so so this is the four, right? These four reasons also apply with the, with the tattoos, the tattoo removal. So, if removing tattoo right, will cause for you know an illness that cannot be cured, right, or will cause for an uh, for your, for the limb to not be able to be used again, right, or will cause for you know um, serious damage on the limb, or will cause for some sort of uh uh. uh yeah, uh, uh, cause for 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 this limb to not be cured ever again. If any of the four reasons happens with the removal of tattoo, then you're allowed to not remove the tattoo, and you're allowed to not remove the tattoo. And it's ma'afu anhu. The 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 the, the najis in the tattoo it's forgiven because taubat. Not taubat, inshallah. I met a a, a lady in Zahra and she was a Christian convert. She used to be a Christian and she came to Islam. She's Scottish, mashallah, and Scottish, Scottish. Like, like she's like all the way Scottish <laughs> this girl. Right, but uh, mashallah, she had a big cross tattoo on her wrist. It's a huge cross tattoo here <laughs> on her wrist. And she became a Muslim and now she's a it's in Usaza in her in her own country in Scotland. Mashallah. Right, but, but huge cross tattoo. And she can't remove it because why? It's right on the wrist. It's right at a, a dangerous part. She can't remove it. Right, so whenever she prays and everything, people can see the huge cross on her wrist. She can't do anything about it. She just wears long sleeves lah, to kind of try and hide it. Mashallah. But that was before she came into Islam. And now she came into Islam and she's stuck with her, with her, with her cross t- t- tattoo on herself. <laughs> she, can't, she can't tattoo the cross because she can add more nudges. <laughs> All she can do is wear long sleeves and cover it up. She supposed to cover it up lah. Okay. Uh, naam. The areas that have been cleaned with stones are forgiven. Okay, what do they mean by this? Areas that have been cleaned with stone. Okay, when you istinja with stone like, or tissue, it's not clean and we know it, right? Because if you have water and tissue, you always choose water, correct? Because water water washes, <laughs> water removes nudges altogether. Tissue does not. And we know that because if let's say, you know, your cat urinate on the floor, we we'll just go there, get dry tissue, lap the floor, okay, da. Then we do that. Would anybody in their right mind do that? <laughs> even if there's no hukum of najis or no najis, would any, even a non-Muslim, would they, would they just go there and wipe with a, with a dry tissue, wipe up the najis, and then it's clean? Nobody would do that, right? 
every any person muslim or non muslim if there is like you know feces or or urine that's wet on the floor right, they would first of all wipe it up with a with a dry tissue to take up the najis then they would like wash it or they would mop it or they put soap or they put and right, they try and remove any form of trace of najis on that on an area correct uh istinja with stone or tissue is basically najis that was there and use dry tissue to remove it and da. That's basically what happened. Correct? Think about it. Right? To use tissue paper is like having that is on the floor and then you wipe it up with, 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 with paper. Correct? And but that's basically your body part. Lah. It's your own body. It's your own body that you're wiping out with paper. So technically it's not it's not clean. Right? It's not clean. We know there's like there's there, there, there are some traces here and there that you can't see. But it's sah. It's not clean, but it's sah. If you fulfill all eight conditions of using tissue paper or, or, or stone, it is valid, but it's not clean. Right? So, which is why it says here, it is ma'fu anhu. Right? Any najis is around the anus, you know, around the vagina, around that, that you, use, you, have, you have fulfilled all the conditions and use paper to, to clean it, tissue paper to clean it, um, there's still a bit left. There's still a bit left. And that you, that you cannot, it's not possible to be removed except with water. And we know that, that there's always a bit left that is not possible to be removed except with water. So that small bit that's left, ma'fu'an. And the one is forgiven. And it's forgiven, it's, it's pardoned. Which is why um, there's that, that there is a sunnah that upon waking up, sunnah of washing the hands. Because Rasul Sam said that, you know, as you sleep, you don't know where your hands go. While you are asleep, like so, because in in the past the Bedouins they used to they used, they used to use stone right, to clean themselves after going to the bathroom, and that would leave traces, you know, of urine or feces on their on their privates, but it's not possible to be removed right, except with, with water. Right, so in the night, when it's hot in the night in the desert, right, they will sweat, and this sweat will 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 will, will mix with the tiny bits of nudges. Uh, in their in their private parts for private regions, and the sweat will carry the nudges with it. So it could be while someone's sleeping, and they feel itchy in, in their private region, and the hands go there subconsciously to scratch, uh, to scratch or to rub or to whatever. Right? So while they're asleep, while they're asleep, right? So it could be the hands touch these areas directly, and there's nudges on the hands. Right, but it's all, it's all, you know, like perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. It's all not with your kid. It's all perhaps. It could happen. It could happen. Then you wake up, your hands are somewhere else. Right? So there's a sunnah of washing the hands. Because of the possibility that your hands touch something while you were asleep. Right, of najis. Okay? So that's why there's a, this, this, this thing lah. Right? Um, in, in the hukum of Islam. Soil along the path which has been ascertained to be filthy is also forgiven. Right? So, It's also forgiven. Right? It is, it is, it is pardoned. Right? So, um, but you, the, because it was his soil, you can't see the najis. Right? And that najis is removed with, uh, with soil in the first place. But you can't, you can't see it. You can't see najis, therefore it's forgiven also. It's part of the earth. Is excuse for that which is difficult to ensure is purity. Is difficulty can differ to difference of in time and place where the clothes and body becomes filthy. Right. So here, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Let me just check the. Mm. So here, right uh, about the one about the the soil where the pathway by the snails on the soil is specifically about for a woman. So if a woman is praying on some sand, sand the sand there, right, and you you kind of like saw animals going past on that sand, and you have no choice but to pray there. And as a woman, you have no choice but to have your clothing touch the ground because you're not you're, of, of, of your outer, right? right? You can't lift your clothing anyway. It has to touch the ground. Right, so um, and you know animals walk past the area all the time, so it could be some nudges here and there, on it, but you just can't see it. You can't see it, but you know the chances lah. There, there, there are there's nudges there. Like how, like you know, in Singapore, there's a upper, 
like in the past people always like like people always uh like they, they girly all the, the the chairs or the stools the the stone the stone tables under the block and my grandmother will always like and, and they will always stay away from me because there's no, there's no need to sit there anyway you know but it's just more of like if it's the road right like you have to and you have to actually use the spaces but my 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 my, my the older folk they will never they will never sit there because they will say like, oh, what, what, what anjing, <laughs> dogs, right? All the dogs all sit there. <laughs> they all sit there and then they are, their bums are on the um, the benches and bums are on the stone stool and everything. Technically, if you don't see anything, there's nothing there. Technically, eh? If you don't see anything, there is nothing there. And also, dry and dry will never make najis. Najis cannot transfer between dry and dry. But, of course, there's no need to sit there. Don't sit there lah. <laughs> and just, just avoid the entire place altogether. Yeah, but technically, by the fake of it, uh, it's no problem. By the fake of it, because there's no there's no ayn of najasa. You can see it. right? And also, it's dry. It's all dry. Right? But technically, you know, I'll avoid also lah. <laughs> because um, dog fur and everything, it's all going to be in the area. It might, might come into your clothing. As you can see, you can avoid it. Um, so it is, uh, okay, so, and it's also excuse what is difficult to ensure is purity. So like what I'm, I just spoke about, about the stone tables. Right, so you, it's, it's very difficult to, to know if this, like, this place is completely clean, right, because, um, of how many people use that area. Uh, so many people use it. You, you can't. You can't possibly ascertain is it is it really clean or not, because uh, there are many people coming in, especially if you live in a non-Muslim environment. And uh, so what they bring in, they don't bring in anything. And uh, so even like when you go in, when you go into like this kind of um, homestays, right? And so usually, usually for myself, I will avoid using any utensils in the homestay uh, because uh, you never know who's going to drink. Uh, uh, not, not 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 drink, but eat pork, right? Because alcohol. With washing with water, it will remove the najis anyway, right? It is a matter of um, the the major najis, the moral lava, right? Najis moral lava, which is swine, right? Swine, dogs, right? That all moral lava, which requires sirtu, correct? So you don't know, you know, if people have used that place and they've eaten, um, you know, a, a pork, right? Using using the the, the, the utensils there, so. It, Usually for me, I, I will avoid using any of the utensils. Uh, so utensils you can avoid. But can I, like, a certain, you know, if the table had pork fallen on it and then they just wiped it up, or, like, the counter in the kitchen, or, like, you know, like, like it's going to be very impossible to try and, like, every... How do you know? You don't know. Every corner of the house <laughs> got Najis Mughalada. <laughs> Come paranoid, right? So, the only... So, that is difficult to ascertain. It's difficult to ascertain its purity. So, therefore, forgiven. It's all forgiven. And because because of different time and place. Okay? Different time and place, you, you were not there to see it. And so, you don't know about it. So, someone said, oh, that, 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 that you know, the couple who lives here, they're always cooking pork. So, it's okay that I will not use the cooking cooking utensils, I will not use the utensils or the, the pots and pans, I will not use for any of these things. But, so, but it's on the counter, the kitchen counter, and it's on the sink also, and it's on the the, 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 the dining table, and it's on the, like, Allah, how, I don't live here, la. I go away and find another house. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to, to figure out. It's well, everywhere. Right, everywhere, you know, all that people will say like, oh, um, you know, you in 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 a workplace, the microwave, and like people people you know they they microwave their 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 pork um food <laughs> and got pork fumes, <laughs> and the fumes go everywhere in the microwave, and then the fumes are, are like stuck on the microwave walls. <laughs> so can I microwave my halal food in the in the pork fumed <laughs> microwave? <laughs> right, technically, technically, yeah, technically, eh. If there's no jaram, there's no substance of najis, and your food does not touch the najis, nor do you touch the najis, technically it's, it's clean. But of course, on the side of like was was, and on the side of not was was, like, on the side of you know being a warok, warok. I know was was saying warok, eh? <laughs> warok is a good thing, or is a bad thing. Like, warok, on the side of being scrupulous, warok, that you don't use it, lah. avoid. Lah. And for me, I'll go on the side of warok. I, 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 I just won't use it. And because it's just <sighs> makro lah. Like, at the very least makro. Right? And if not, if not, then it's haram. Right? If, if it, right? That's what it means here. Yeah? That it's difficult to ascertain. 
and be- because of this number of people who use it, it is very difficult to ascertain. Right. It comes. It doesn't, it doesn't. Doesn't include all forms of hotels and and uh, places whereby you can stay. It is very hard to figure it out. Right. The one about the soil, right, is like um, you know, like the like animals have droppings on the soil. So if you go ten, if you go um camping, I used to wonder when I used to when I was in uh, JC to go camping and everything. Like what if what if the the soil beneath me has like nudges from like rats or 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 mice or like you know animals that have nudges coming out of them. I can't see. I can see grass, uh, but what if there's the in the soil are the nudges? Uh, so the, the the region says, "Ma'fu anhu, forgiven. Don't be paranoid about it. I right? forgiven. You can pray there. Just pray, pray on that on that spot because it's difficult to ascertain. You know, let it be. All right. So the last one here. As for the blood of pimples, apa ni? Masih Arabic. Wah, masih saya nama Muhammad. As for the blood of pimples and like um warts. I I don't know abscess wound pass water mixed with blood or pass from wound blood from fleas lice mosquitoes bed bugs blood from cupping and blood letting uh, as for all of this filth of flies bad urine urine from one of one who has uterine incontinence is the harder blood water that originates from wounds um, blisters that change its smell and whatever of it that is little or a lot they are all forgiven alhamdulillah. <laughs> Right, so if you if you squeeze your pimple before you pray, then there's people after you squeeze got blood come out, <laughs> right? And it won't stop bleeding. Like, Allah, why did I squeeze before I pray? Right, for pray when squeeze, right? Who do you got pimple and you squeeze, and the blood won't stop. <laughs> you have to pray, right? Uh, forgiven, so forgiven. Okay, so all of this, all of these. Eh? Why do they say blood from from fleas and lice? In case you have fleas and lice on your head, and when we all protect us, and then like you scratch, 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 and then they die. And then there's like blood from those creatures. Forgiven. They're all forgiven. Uh, bit bugs, same thing. Because basically, they are, these are animals that live on human beings. Okay, animals that live on human beings. Right, blood from cupping and bloodletting. Basically, okay, this one is like after you do a cu- your cupping, right? Um, the wounds. Because the cupping, they cut, they cut your skin. Correct? Right? And the wounds there, right, on the skin. So, it... Um, like they would, they would tell me whenever I do cupping, like the the one who does it for me will say you cannot wash that area, you know, uh, for about five hours. They'll be like, what? Five hours? Now it's over. I because there's like, I mean, the thing, the, the blood flowed onto your skin, right? I said, I want to pray. I, I I can't have like you know blood stains on my body and I want to pray. Right? So usually I will get like my husband to get a wet towel and and wipe around. <laughs> Usually I beef her. <laughs> Cause my 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 was was is not also my my my, my particularity lah about najis. Right, but I I would just shower it very quickly. Even though they say don't do, don't do it, but I do it. <laughs> I just shower it. And right, um, cause of the all the blood stains everything. But but I know the one who cups me, she will she will wipe away all the blood and everything. But yeah lah, I will still I will still wash it. Right, but basically the blood around the wound is all forgiven. It's all forgiven, eh? Bloodletting, cupping, and so on. Full from flies. So the flies, if they land on you and then they urinate. Flies urinate, eh? And there's a, there's a fill from flies. They urinate. And you didn't see. All you didn't see, blood urine. Basically, all the things that, that, that you... All of these are, are nudges that is non-avoidable. And you can't avoid these nudges. So to prevent people from going into a paranoia of about nudges, 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 <laughs> nudges, right? Uh, all forgiven. All forgiven. Okay. Alhamdulillah, inshallah we'll stop there for today. Um, next week we'll continue for the next part. I will announce next week lah. Uh, your exam until where? I have not done your paper yet. I'm supposed I'm supposed to finish by now your paper, but I have not done your paper yet. So inshallah I will uh, tell you where's your exam up till. Inshallah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. فتح أن الله يزغنا منافع وعمل خاص ومستعين ودلالة على الهدى ويسر بقبل النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم السلام. وإلى أرواح معانينا مشيخنا وزبيل علينا وإلى حضرة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة